Another newsmaker joining us here uh, on the set in Davos, Goldman Sachs Chairman and CEO, uh, Lloyd Blankfein. Mr. Blankfein, thank you for joining Good afternoon. us. Good morning. Good afternoon. A lot of stuff uh, has happened in the past year, 40 percent in the stock market, um, 3 percent for two quarters, maybe three. Um, but the volatility is so low that Goldman's trading actually is, is affected by it to some extent because there's so little volatility. Is it worth it for, for all the good things that are happening that you can't make quite as much money uh, trading? You'd probably trade it for that one. You, you know, we just uh, we just go with it. I, I, I take uh, peace and happiness at least for a while. So it, it, even though uh, the, the debt trading is so quiet right now. I mean, it is quiet. Most of everything. Quiet. I mean, think about it. Uh, risk levels are low. Risk premium is low. If you think the markets are never going to move, you're not going to hedge anything because why expend that money? And the irony always is that um, when things haven't moved for a while, the risk premium gets low, the cost of hedging gets low, which sets you up for the next big move, and then everybody wishes they had bought insurance. But the, the funny thing is, people, it's like, having, it's like having a bunch of hurricanes on the east coast of the United States. The risk of a hurricane is the same the summer before and the summer after the, the stream of hurricanes. When do people pay the biggest risk premium? Okay, so what, is that, what does that say, though, about where the market is now? Well, right. I mean, mine. the canaries in the coal mine, there, there are some well-known ones, like a David Tepper, for example. But once tax reform passed, he said that, re, that you, know, you revalue what valuations are based on the E in Look, P to E. We're in, a, we're in a sweet spot, and, and I like it this way. Let me tell you, trading is soft. All our other businesses, which correlate to global growth, are kind of doing very, very well. Finance, you know, doing M&A, financing M&A, managing assets for people. That's going very well. Trading is a little soft, no big surprise, uh, in a market that's not that volatile. But they tend not to stay this way. Is there a rational? Trading, your trading was a little softer than yeah. a lot of your peers, and you yeah. were making some substantial no, in, trages. You no, know, we're indexed. Your, you know, we're indexed to a certain kind of market. Um, and we're moving, you know, we're moving ourselves around. And, you know, look, there are two things. People, two things. One is the strategic question of whether commodities over the long term is a good business to be in. Fixed income is a good business to be in. And the answer is yes. Then there's another question, which is execute. Sometimes you zig and the yep. market zags, and that goes with the territory. Over a cycle, we have tended to outperform uh, in trading, but we don't do that every as year. A, but it, that's tactical as a great versus risk strategic. guy. As a great risk guy, anything that you see in the equities market globally that rises to the level of irrational in terms of the you know, I, I won't say things have been going well for a long time. But look, I would feel a lot better about where asset prices are, including equities, if interest rates were normalized. How much, you know, you, you know, the, you basically you discount earnings by, by an interest rate, and interest right. rates are very, very low. If global growth is over 4 percent and interest rates around the world are close to zero, are very low, can't be surprised that there's a lot of investment and a lot of froth in the market. Maybe there should even be right. more. What's going to happen when interest rates normalize and get closer to where the growth rate is and catch up by history. Doesn't, what, no, what is this normalized? Is, this is, is that 5, 6 percent? That's thing. sort of the Ray Dalio. But then you have, to be, you have to time it right. Well, That's you know, the problem. Again, Not the problem is the challenge. I've been doing this for 35 years. Goldman Sachs has been doing it for 149 years. Over the cycle, you see things. But, you know, you have to stay in mind. You don't get, you know, they don't call you up the day before. Um, I'll give you a food for thought. Now, I think we're in a sweet spot. I'm very bold. I think there's a good runway. I don't see where the problem immediately is going to come from. But just think as a thought, how much of asset prices, how many businesses, interest rates have been low for a long time. How much of commerce and trade and business and investment is premised on very, very low interest rates? If you think back 10 years, weren't we shocked to find out how much assets around the world were hinged on real, U.S. real estate prices? Well, if that could be the way of real estate price and people get, can get lulled by low... And what would people... People were investing in real estate. They were using real estate as collateral to borrow money to invest in other things. And But basically, there was a big... The so crisis was real estate. Happen, do you see that happening now? I think we way? have to chew our way through, and I'll use this term, a normalization. People say, what's the new normal? Maybe you're interested. I don't think it's normal to allocate one of the most important commodities in the world, namely money, and have it be allocated in a sensible way if it's priced at very, very low. Zero. In some cases, zero. And so I don't think of that as normal. Uh, I don't think it stays there in the, long, in, in the long run. And I think we have to go through a period of that normalization before we get really confident that, gee, 
uh, this is the way life's going to be forever. But I don't necessarily see, you know, any shock. Uh, I think we can absorb the kind of interest rate rises we have in the United States that are forecast over the next year. But if you ask me what I would be nervous about, I'd say, listen, we have to get through a period of interest rate normalization before you could say that this is where asset prices belong. How do you assess uh, the Trump administration? He's going to be here on Friday. But you've, you've trolled him a little bit occasionally on Twitter. But we've also had this, this tax reform plan. Look, there's a lot of stuff that I like. And probably if I just added, you know, looked at it and I'd say I like a lot more stuff than I don't like, and some of the stuff I don't like, I really don't like. And ironically, the stuff I tend not to like is not as substantive. It goes to, well, some of it is, and some of it is social aspects of it, and I've, been, I've said this, but I don't want to be, you know, hypocritical either. I've really liked what he's done for the economy, and I think he's gone out of his way uh, to be very, very supportive of the system, and I don't want to be antagonistic to that. And, I, and frankly, frankly, I, thought, I, I want to honor that. I thought about how I'd ask you that that question. In, in that, you basically just did a Ben Franklin close. You put the positives on one side, the negatives on the other, and the positives that way. Are you now happy about the outcome of the election, or do you still wish the other candidate had won? Well, that's a compound question. Um, just a yes or no, or you know, I don't have to. Uh, you know, it is what it is. I'm, I'm, I'm very good at you know being a risk kind of guy. I, I kind of adapt to the way the world is. But you like tax I would reform. Say, that, tax reform would not have happened, Lloyd. True. I, I think the market would be lower. I'd be dealing with more regulation, compounding. Right. Too much regulation and in some respects. Like, yes. You're I would happy have more with of it. it not you're, you're happy with the outcome. Uh, I'd say the animal spirits are out there and a little bit more uh, vital than they would have been otherwise. I'd say the country might be a bit less polarized, but I'm not even sure about that, to right. give the point, because right. there's a lot of, you know, not one party is responsible for the polarization. And by the way, it's really the extreme wing of both parties that are responsible for it, and I'd love to find the moderates stepping up no, and, uh, and compromising. And again, I want to be, you know, true. It's not just the policies themselves in a gross kind of macro way, you know, tax reform. I think we're going to go up onto a period where we're going to push for infrastructure spending, you know, et cetera. You think 3% is doable? If, if you and Diamond both say 3% is doable, then I'm ready to just call it doable. I think Andrew, three, I, I, You I, do? I, I do think it's durable. J Jamie said doable potentially 4% in the quarter of this year. You know, let me tell you, you have to get to 3% on the way to 4%. Not, so supposedly <laughs> there's not an economist in the world that believes it. That's, that's what I'm told all the time. You know, there's a lot of things that, um, you know, who... Okay. <laughs> yeah, 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 who cares? I know. No, I, I, say, I know. You know. Another thing. I, you know, we. I went to. Uh, I went as part of the trade mission to China. Yeah. And again, aside from the big macro and you know policy issues, you know, there was the president bringing companies from the United States, and very aggressively with Wilbur, I think is coming on next. Right. Yeah. right. Aggressively promoting U.S. business dealings with China, and I know specifically there were things that got done that otherwise wouldn't have gotten done. And I, so I don't want to not mark that. No, there, there are issues on trade, though. And, you know, last year at this time, I remember we were all sitting around the desk and every person who came on was very worried that there could be a potential trade war just based on some of the commentary that existed. Well, I think it's it a, didn't happen. I, it didn't happen. Well, it didn't happen. You know, but, you, you have to put the word yet at the end of all these yes, things. So, <laughs> so it didn't happen. And I think that, you know, I have anxiety about that. Um, but look, like everything else, there's a core of at least a core validity to these points, you know, in the trade. So we all went to, you know, we all took EC1, and everybody knows the theory of relative adva advantage. Everybody should do Compared whatever their advantage. best, mm -hmm. what they're best at, and then we should all trade with each other, and that's how you accrete wealth in the world, maximize wealth in the world. Right. But also there's a distribution element. Where does the wealth go? Uh, both among nations and, you know, within a nation. And the fact of the matter is, it may well have been that the U.S. didn't do as well, even though the wealth of the world was maximized, not necessarily for the U.S. Now, you know, you don't stop there because you say, well, gee, if you're going to have that situation, certain industries are going to get hollowed out in the U.S., and you have politically unre political unrest, which is kind of what we have a bit of, unrest because of this whole inequality issue, which may have been caused by certain kinds of jobs disappearing and not being replaced. You say, well, gee, political instability is not very good for commerce either. Right. And so I can make, you know, you have to go together. And so my eyes have been, I haven't thrown in, I haven't changed radically my thoughts about a lot of stuff, but you know, like everything else, I have an open mind, I listen to this stuff, and I see the other side. Are you surprised 
after the, this tax reform package that we've seen so many companies, Starbucks just this morning, announcing that they're going to be giving raises to their people. Obviously, uh, we just had Jamie Dimon. He's doing the same. Did that surprise you that it happened as quickly as it did? You know, I don't... I, I, I... I, I don't. Yes, I, it surprised me. I didn't. I didn't think that it would. It's, I mean, so far, the only accounting effect that we've had from the uh, from the change in the tax law is we had a four point four billion dollar write down, <laughs> accounting write down. So, uh, if anybody wants to share that with us, please give me a call. That's like a non-cash thing. No, it's a non-cash yeah. thing. But uh, that's the. You still the beat expectations effect. in last year, right? I think. Yeah, we had a good. Um, tangible equity. No, we had a good. Yeah, we had a very high return on uh, equity with the trading where it is. Yeah. No, no. All the other businesses we have are, are doing very well and well enough to compensate for the fall off. And you know, look, the bottom line is that where I don't, I don't mind being known as a good trading firm. You know, we go with that. Uh, it's not a great trading, but even in an environment. That's that's very unsupportive of of trading, uh, where trading and, and against our revenue base is well under twenty percent. Our other businesses are performing so well that we outperformed and did better on a whole, and so it is what it is. And you're right. I have a mixed mind. Do I really want the kind of market that would generate a lot of exactly a lot of trading? But right. guess what? Whether I want it or not, it's going to happen you, eventually. You're opening a, a Bitcoin um, trading desk. We are. That's what I read. Is that not true? Uh, well, I read, uh, uh, yes, it's not true, and I read it also. <laughs> <laughs> has, the, has the Blank Fine family bought any Bitcoin? No. What we said was we were opening, we were we were clearing futures right. in Bitcoins for some of our futures clients. We clear them. We're we're, bro we're a prime broker, and so if our clients are going to do it, we're going to go do it. But a principal Bitcoin oh, business no. where we're going long and short Bitcoin and market making, uh, so far. You know, we're the not my family is not involved in the. So you make. Uh, I can't speak for all my, uh, you know, for all my millennial uh, children. Your children. But uh, the, uh, the the grown-ups aren't. God, I just had a <laughs> flashback when you were trying to explain eleven what it meant to be a market maker versus a oh, principal in a trade. You're gonna have to do. You're gonna have to do yeah. that again. Don't, don't rekindle my. Oh my God. PTSD. Just had a horrible. Uh, yeah, PTSD. Yeah. You just had a horrible flashback. Do you think? I mean, China. They're they're adults over there. Do you think? That they could, we could get to the point where we got them so angry that something actually happens, or do you think that they understand the way things work? On yeah. trade? Yeah, on trade. Do you think that we could actually screw this up, or they're, they're adults? I mean, of course we can, and of course. Though, but right? I, you know, again, I look at this, what's going on, and again, you know, we're at the point now where we're, you know, we kind of know, you know, you know what's go know what's going on in the world, and I'd say. You know, it's it's not so you know it's not so clear what the right strategy in a negotiation has to be. Right. But if you're going to negotiate and get some benefits, you gotta you gotta you gotta you gotta lay you gotta lay it down and say right. you know this is the way it's going to be. What do you want to do? Right. And I think, I think the Chinese have been an emerging market, but a lot of parts of the Chinese market have emerged. Yeah. And now we have to compete on more of a level playing field. And I think they, they recognize it. In some cases, they, they request a subsidy for the world, not a real subsidy, but a, a benefit. Uh, and in some cases, I think they dominate certain aspects of the market, right. and, and especially some aspects of the industrial market. And so, you know, we'll see where it goes. But, um, you know, it's easy to second guess and where it goes. But if we, you know, if we had, the, if we had that brief and we had to engage and we had to improve, uh, Make things come out better than they're coming out. You know, we, we might adapt some of the strategy as well. Right. Great to have you great here. It's great to be had. Thank you. Hey there. Thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.